Thank you, Noel. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Rotarians, Rotor actors, and family and friends. We belong to a fabulous organization, but it's time that we looked at rejuvenating Rotary. So today, I'm not going to answer all the issues involved with rejuvenating Rotary, but simply to talk about three aspects of rejuvenating Rotary. The first one is to look at our front door to the outside world and have a look to see if we can't fix that wholesale by getting back to our clubs straight after this conference and starting work on that front door, the websites and bulletins that we have. The second thing that I'd like to talk to you about is working together. Bill Boyd recently spoke to us past our right president, Bill Boyd, explained there's a family of five boys who aren't getting on well. And he asked them after much chastising, he said, look, it's time that we sort this out. I want you to go out into the woods and pick up some twigs, some branches, and bring them back. And he asked the youngest, break yours. And the kid said, no problem, and he broke it. He then got the other four twigs together, or burn branches together, and he asked the eldest, can you break this? And he couldn't. Now the moral of that story is collectively, the 1,200 clubs in Australia and the clubs in New Zealand working together, we have a powerful story to tell. So I'd like to share today with you some of those examples of where we can take what's working really well, but do it together. And the third aspect that I'd like to talk about in terms of rejuvenation, I might put that forward. The other way. It's off. That's better. The other, third aspect that I'd like to talk to you about today is strengthening our Rotary Foundation. We see so much, particularly at the end of a Rotary year, of support going out to other organizations when we really should be looking at our organization. So today, let's start with a fax. I'll get you to do that, Bill, please. <laughs> That's because the Kiwis touched this. <laughs> okay, let me try again. I'll get it closer. Forward, back. <laughs> I'm from Tasmania, remember that. Sorry, Tasmanians. <laughs> telling us? Our Australian population is growing, but the Rotary numbers are going backwards. Wholesale. We've heard Stuart Hill talk about that. There are so many pockets of people in Australia and New Zealand who want to join us, and the numbers are growing in terms of the population, so why are our numbers not? Let's have a look at some of the issues. 82% of our membership directors at district or in clubs tell us there's a problem. I want to know what the other 80% are doing because I reckon we have a problem right around Australia and New Zealand. So let's look at the simple things that we can fix. 17% of us are women. Here's one simple thing that we can fix overnight. Why can't we have diversity and increase those numbers immediately? Let's place a lot of importance on making our world more welcoming to diversity. Here's another one. 2% of us are under the age of 30, and 11% of us are under the age of 40. When some of us started in Rotary, we were under 30, we were under 40, and we were welcomed in. Why don't we do this to the Melbourne Parkers today? Why don't we do this and have a real diverse group within each club? When you look at your family album, you don't see photos of people just like yourself. You see photos of kids, grandkids, teenagers trying to make them, career-minded 27, 30-year-olds, you know, being supported by mum, dad, and grandma, and grandpa. It's a family album. When you look at clubs that are really clicking, 
It's a club that shows, showcases diversity in everything that they say and do, and we need to focus on that. Here's another one. 44% of us leave within three years. And I was one of them that resigned as well within three years. And my club president said, Philip, I'm not accepting this. I want you to go away and have six months leave of absence and come back. I'm really pleased that Wendy Bennett did that. Because I couldn't think of what I'd do without my rotary and the friends that we've made. So what are the facts to X? We know all of this. Cost is a real issue. Let's go back and shake the cage and not accept the status quo. Let's challenge the cost. How can we do it better so that we can have more people join us? Why aren't we at attracting diversity? What are the things we're doing that prevent people from a diverse background walking in the door and staying? They are great Rotarians. Why aren't we encouraging people who are younger to be amongst us and be our future leaders? And what is the retention problem about? Let's be real in our analysis. Let's start when we get back to our clubs this week. Don't wait. We've been saying this for 10, 12 years, and I've been in Rotary 13 years, and I've heard the same message every year. Now's the time, not for the leaders, but for our membership to drive the change and rejuvenation. What are our focus groups telling us? Don't just look at the internal story, because if you believe your own PR, we're going to be doing the same thing. Let's bring in some of the community. Let's talk to our community partners that we work with day to day, and ask them about Rotary and how we should improve. So what are the focus groups telling us? Most people in Australia and in New Zealand really would love to participate, but they say that they don't have the time to commit and the cost is too prohibitive. Many people consider themselves community-minded, but next to none of them look at Rotary because they don't see us as a space to be in. We also really need to look at how we can make Rotary top of choice for those people who look to do something in the community. And the place to start are our websites. Many people outside of Rotary have no idea about the great work that we do. We know the internal story, how fantastic it is. There are a zillion stories, there are a zillion friendships. You learn so much, you get goosebumps when you do stuff. Why aren't we sharing it with people outside? So in summary, we've got to become known to more people. We have to consider us putting an attractive proposition forward. And we've got to change that image, the stereotype that people talk to us about. I wear my badge of pride every day, and often I get, well, I used to, not anymore, I'm getting older, but I used to get, I thought Rotary was for old men. And then you've got to explain it. No, my club has a number of people who are in their 20s and 30s, and there are women involved, and there's diversity. And if you show them the magic, that's what we should be doing. So I wonder why over 13 years we haven't changed. And I come back to what's happening around the world. Social media has made everything closer. People buy differently. You look at the newspapers, the Fairfax group struggling. You look at travel, people are buying travel online. You look at the way you book a restaurant, it's online. When people want to do something in the community, they go online. So let's have a look at what they're seeing. <laughs> if you're in the audience, I'm not picking on you, right? <laughs> and I've got a big brother here, so look out. He's, he's still here with the care of me. <laughs> and look, we talk about having fun. Is that fun? We have a thousand stories of fun, but why do we put that up? Who prefers, who's been talking about the manual of procedure when they're trying to do something? Well, forget the manual of procedure, the boss is here. You know, let's, let's work at saying, yes, you can do it. <laughs> I've gone onto most Australian Rotary Club and District websites. The number of times I see that, amazing. 
have a look, and this is not to embarrass anyone, have a look at your club website. And if you can't find 12 things that you need to fix tomorrow, I'll be surprised. And then the great chestnut. Why do we talk another language? <laughs> Stuart? How come? Let's get rid of that for a minute. When we're talking to people walking in the door, they don't need to see this. Who's with me on this? <laughs> And now what about the demands we put on people? You know, every time my club or any other club or district needs money, we look at our members. They're already paying two, three, four thousand dollars a year. Why are we touching them up with more raffles and more, you know, fleecing? Let's get smart about this and talk to people outside of Rotary. Governments, local councils, there's money in buckets there. Businesses. People that we've asked in business that we've known, they're friends. And they come along and say to us, I can't join Rotary over a nice dinner because I'm too busy setting up my business or too busy doing business. Well, if they're doing that, they're making money. Explain the essence of Rotary, the greatness of Rotary, and ask them to become a Paul Harris fellow. $250 a quarter will get you our most valuable <coughs> honor. And you'll be helping us do some great work that will help lead to peace through service. You can be a part of it even though you're not a member. We ask the question, join us, we've done the hard yards, and then we let the whole thing go through with a zero goal score, when we can act absolutely engage them. And once a year, bring them to the club when you've got a great speaker or when you're talking about the great projects you're working on, and get the support again for the coming year. Man, when I was looking at our websites, I saw so many old logos. There was one district website with Sow the Seeds of Love. I thought, well, they must have loved it so much they kept it. <laughs> it's time, I think, for us to be honest. And we in the audience are included. We are the audience of Rotary. It's our Rotary. It doesn't belong to some secret leadership group. It's for us to make a commitment. These images that we have up there aren't attracting people. Don't leave it to one person to do. Get the whole of club working on it. Make sure your club service is singing. Push, prod, pro. Get external help. Get, it, get help from an agency next door. They might not be Rotarians today, they'll become a Rotarian. But fix the images on your websites. That is the front door to doing new business. If we don't, we are going to be like Kodak. We will be the gone, the oblivion, soon. Here are the facts about our websites. How can people contact you if you don't have your phone numbers on there? Or an email address? You know, we've got to really look at the images of work for tomorrow. That's what we're doing tomorrow. In some of my district clubs, we're still looking forward to our conference back in March. <laughs> or the RI convention, not in Bangkok, but the year before. We're going to fix these things. They're not head ready. They're actually jeopardizing what we do. And if we don't fix the websites and Balkans, we'll be back here again in five years. And we'll have lost a few more members, and maybe a few districts would have, you know, been amalgamated. And the story continues. So, one decision I'd like you to make today, the one decision is get back and challenge the status quo with websites and Balkans. We need to do this to reverse the membership decline in all our clubs, and even if you've done great work in your clubs, help by being a club that actually grows significantly. Because, as Ron Burton just said, each of us can actually look at chartering another club, even if you have three or 4,000 residents around you. If the work that we do makes a difference to our community and we encourage new people to join, get another club started. Make our images more attractive, stop the stereotypes, and be the organization that you want your organization to be tomorrow. Don't be the organization that we were 30, 40 years ago. 
So it's up to us all. Let's really concentrate on it. Let's inspire the people, and thanks to Dennis Shaw, our DT from District 9800, let's make sure we show people with Rotary it's amazing. That's what we know. Why don't we spread that message outside? Now, I'd just like us to see you know, how we can bring the other people on board. Make them feel like they can come and join us. And make them feel very quickly how they can make a contribution. We cannot do what we've done over the last 20 years where we encourage people to join us and then we park them saying learn the manual of procedure, wait for two years before you know a rotary and then get started, or worse. We've tried that 20 years ago and it didn't work. We've got to forget that. Invite and compel people to join us. Welcome them in. Greet them like they're your long lost best friend. Get them started. Get their hands dirty. When you and I became Rotarians, we became Rotarians when we got our hands dirty. Don't bark them. People don't have time to come to dinner and be a night talker. So there's a few things that I'd like you to look at. We've talked about it. Make sure that everything links up. You know, if you aren't in this space in the next couple of months, you're getting further behind. You will be out of business as a club. Your LinkedIn will come maybe in 12 months if you haven't got it, but your Twitter, your Facebook, your website need to be seen from the same page. So talk to the webmasters in the audience. There are a few of us here. Let's get you the best help. Let's put the best projects that you have on YouTube and get the message seen. So please, the bottom line is we need to rejuvenate now and not wait <coughs> too much longer. Why? And a few of the speakers have spoken about the success cycle. You can join anywhere. That's the good thing about this. More attractive clubs will lead to more members, more capacity to achieve, more partner support, more support for our foundation through those partners, and more high impact projects. So, I want to now simply talk about four projects that happen in a shape around the country. But imagine 1,200 clubs, not in the first year, but in three years, 1,200 grocery clubs around Australia working on something in Social Inclusion Week. Social Inclusion Week is a Commonwealth Government initiative. Jonathan Welsh, AO, a member of my club, is the chairman for it. The Commonwealth Government Fund his activities. He'd love Rotary to get involved. One simple idea. This starts on the 24th of November, finishes on the 3rd of December. Go to the local shopping plaza or the local large business that has a high rise. They put up Christmas trees. Say, we, Rotary, would love to have a giving tree concept. Encourage their staff, their friends, the customers to bring in a gift. Buy a spy for the homeless. Buy a Paul Harris fellow and increase our foundation dollars. But get involved in the Christmas giving tree so that your Rotary Club can take those goods and pass them on to those who are socially isolated, the homeless. I've tried this with three building owners in the city of Melbourne. All three of them love the idea, think it's great, would give them more kudos and work. There are three others that I'd like you to come kind of talk to me about because I think I'm getting the wind up here, but particularly International Women's Day. Um, in March, talk to Kerry Kornhauser, our diversity specialist down south, and see how you can get involved with your district on International Women's Day. Kerry ran a breakfast. 722 people last this year turned up. 90% of the 92% of them were not Rotarians, all committed to joining service. And last page, if we can look at getting the people that say no to membership because they're too busy to become social entrepreneurs and buy themselves a Paul Harris by a quarterly donation of $250, that will strengthen the foundation. Second idea for you to look at, and we'll send this information out to you, we all buy Christmas cards. Let's start using e-Christmas cards with a message that's tagged to it telling them about the great work of our foundation and paying $25, $35, $45 $45 that goes straight to your club, TRF account, and helps us strengthen your club's account. And make sure we promote the Rotary Foundation at every opportunity. Thank you for listening.